see one. So that's going to be the prominence under uh, C7. T3. That's going to be in line and two below T1. It's going to be in line with the um, borders of the scapula right, right in there. T7. That's the inferior border. Can you lift up? That's in line here with the inferior border of the scapula. The supraspinous ligament. Those are the ligaments between the spinous processes. Costovertebral junction. That's where the ribs articulate with the spine, and, but that's kind of hard to palpate. The trapezius. That's the muscle in here on both sides. The paravertebral muscles. Those muscles run down the spine on both sides. Scapular muscles. That's the muscle around the scapula holding that there. Uh, L3. Um, finding L5 as around the PSI is it a one. That's four and then three. L4. So four is there again. L5. L5 is there. Step off deformity. The step off deformity would commonly between be between L4 and L5 and L5 and S1, but it does not look like my patient has that deformity. Median sacral crests. Um, that's going to be here. PSIS. That's about in here. Iliac crests. That's the top of the hip there. Gluteus maximus. That's the butt muscle. Gluteus medius. Medius is like the lateral butt muscle there. Ischial tuberosity. That is directly down the butt muscle there. Greater I mean the butt bone there. Greater trochanter. Trochanter is there. Sciatic nerve. That is connected between the trochanter and the um, greater, I mean the ischial tuberosity. Now I'm going to go into um, active range of motion. Um, first I'll have my patient tuck her chin in and flex downwards to touch her toes. And now I'll have her stand and extend backwards. Um, lateral bending, I'll have her try to touch her knees with her hands on each side. And now I'll have her sit down in the chair and I'll have her rotate side to side her trunk. Okay, for, I'll have her stay there and I'll do goniometry for rotation first. So uh, it's gonna go on top of her head. I'll have her hold it. Uh, on top of her head and then line up the chromium processes and I'll have you go either way. That is, okay, one more time. Go ahead. That is about 50. And then I'll have her go the other way. And that also is about 50. Um, so now she can go ahead and stand. Um, and I'm going to do um, lateral bending. So the fulcrum will be at the um, S1 region and the um, movement arm pointing up to C7 and I'll have her go whichever way first. That is about 20 and I'll have her go the other way. Same thing, that was about 20 as well. So you want them to be equal compared bilaterally or close. Now you will measure flexion and extension. So I'm gonna find um, C7 down to S1 and that's about 21. And I'll have her bend over forward and it should lengthen and it lengthened about to 24. And I'll have her extend backwards and it should shorten and it shortened to about 18. Um, now I'll do some passive range of motions. Uh, with my patient laying on her back on the table with her feet up in a hook lying position. So my hand is going to go underneath her shoulders and one under her legs there and I'm just going to lift her up. Um, while she's here I can do rotation, moving her legs side to side. <laughs> um, now I'll have her flip onto her stomach. Legs out straight, hands, um, shoulder with area and then I'm gonna try not to choke her and go under her um, chest and just lift up 
And now as she's there, I'll have her interlock her fingers behind her head for manual muscle testing. So try to extend upward. Five out of five, that's good. On your back in the same hook lying position. Uh, trying to sit up. Okay, and then I will have her try to bring this shoulder. That was five out of five. That was good strength. I'll have her try to bring this shoulder to her opposite hip. Good, five out of five. Same thing. Good, five out of five. Um, now I will have her flip onto her stomach for a um, special test, starting with a spring test. Um, so I'll be pushing down onto the um, spine there, um, and I want to, I'm looking for like a springing of it to come back up. And if it didn't spring, it could be a facet joint sprain or it could be hypomobile. Um, now I'll have my patient sit at the end of the table. And I'm gonna take, have her take a deep breath and then blow it out into her fist. So if she had pain with that, that could be a herniated disc and that is the Valsalva test. Um, now I'll have her lay back down um, for Milgrams, she'll, she's just gonna try to extend, um, I mean, yeah, lift your both legs up, straight leg raise, try to do it for 30 seconds. If the patient couldn't do this or there was pain with this, then it would um, also be a herniated disc. Um, now I'm gonna do Hoover, Hoover sign. Uh, so I'm just gonna lift up both legs and she's gonna raise the, one of them. So she doesn't push down into the opposite um, hand um, that's still in my, the foot that's in my hand, she should be pushing down if she had real pain. But if she doesn't push down, um, she has malingering or faking it, she doesn't really have an injury. Um, and for straight leg raise, I'm going to internally rotate, adduct, and raise the leg until there's pain. Oh. And then I'm gonna bring it down a bit till the pain goes away. And then I'm gonna um, dorsiflex the foot. If it hurts oh. again, then um, that is a sciatic nerve irritation or uh, possible impingement. Um, for Wells straight leg test, um, since this is affected side, I'm going to lift the unaffected side um, and if she had pain with that on the affected side, uh, that would be a herniated disc. Um, next, I'm going to go on to the bowstring test. So for that, I'm going to uh, flex the hip up until there's pain. Wow. Then I'm going to um, flex the knee until the pain goes away. Yeah. It's gone. And then I'll push into the popliteal fossa. And then if the pain returns, with um, pushing into that popliteal fossa, then that is a sci sciatic nerve um, impingement or irritation there. For kerning Bradinsky, I will have my patient interlock her fingers behind her head and lift up one leg. And if there's pain there, then I'll have her flex her knee. And then if the pain um, goes away, then that is a nerve root irritation or maybe a potential impingement. So I will have my patient stand for the stork standing um, facing away from me. I'll be here to provide support but I'll just have her extend backwards on one leg. So lifting one leg. And if there is pain with that, that would be a possible pars interarticularis fracture or spinal lithosis. Um, Next I'll do quadrant, um, so I'm going to be pushing down with both hands, in this video I can't, but pushing down with both hands, I'm going to have her extend backwards, side bend, and then rotate. So if there is pain with that, uh, it could be local pain, and then it would be a uh, facet joint sprain, it could be radicular pain, which is radiating, and that would... Um, indicate a nerve root impingement and then if there's pain at the PSIS that would be a SI joint um, dysfunction. Uh, finally I'll do myotomes and dermatomes and reflex testing. Um, so for dermatomes starting with L1 
that's the high groin region up here. So I'd have my patient close her eyes, I'd ask sharp doll, sharp doll, and she didn't differentiate the pain. So then L2, moving downward here, sharp doll, sharp doll. Then L3, sharp doll. L4, sharp doll. L5, sharp doll, that's like the tibial region. Um, then S1 is lateral hamstring. S2, medial hamstring. Okay, um, now I will do the biotones for this. So for S1 and S2, it is hip flexion, so my patient can lay down and extend her leg up. And then I will do for L3, it is sitting at the end of the table, um, knee extension, so just pick your knee straight up. And then for L5, L4, it is um, dorsiflexion, so foot up to the air. Um, and then L5 is great toe extension, so she'd be bringing her big toe up. And then S1's door, um, plantar flexion, so foot on the gas pedal. And then S2 is knee flexion, so bringing her knee up. Then for the reflex testing on these, there's none for L1, but L2 through L5 is patella. So there you see it moved. And then I would have the patient shoe off, but for S1 and S2, it's Achilles. So tapping over the Achilles. That's all.